first learned about the muskox hunt from the Nunavut Territory probably around seven years ago, I think. And it had kind of been in the back of my mind as a, a bucket list item that I'd like to do someday. We're in a little bit of a blizzard conditions. I like a challenge, and the challenge of this obviously is the cold and the waiting and the patience that you have to have on this hunt. Hunting, fishing, camping is a dying art. The traditions of the outdoor sportsmen are more important than ever, and it's up to us to pass them on to others. Two families, one passion to inspire the next generation of ethical hunters and conservationists, continuing the legacy of hunting and fishing in the outdoors. What draws me to the muskox? I, I would say where they live and how they survive in the environment that they live in. It's absolutely amazing. Ten and a half months out of 12, it's freezing cold and winter times are completely dark and it's minus 60 degrees. The more I looked it up and the more I got interested with how also prehistoric these muskox are looking. The environment that they live in is amazing to me. I first learned about the muskox hunt probably around seven years ago. Uh, my brother came up here and went on a hunt for himself. He was telling me all about it. And it had kind of been in the back of my mind as a, a bucket list item that I'd like to do someday. Decided to take Joey with me. Uh, it's the time of year where he's on spring break from school. I like a challenge, and the challenge of this obviously is the cold and the waiting and the patience that you have to have on this hunt. It's gonna be cool. No pun intended. <laughs> I think anytime you go on a trip like this, you're gonna have travel issues, so to speak. These were just kind of long layovers. And yeah, we left Reno to Seattle, Seattle to Edmonton, Alberta. We met Shane in Reno at Safari Club. He told us about the extreme cold weather gear that you would need for this hunt. We brought our gear, Cryptek down jackets and insulating, you know, layers, long underwear layers and vests and beanies and hats and, and you know, layer gloves and everything that you would need or use on any other hunt, you'd be fine. But I guess when it's minus 30 to minus 60 sometimes, that doesn't work. So we showed up, he checked all our gear, and then we went to his storage unit and we got the uh, Canada Goose Down bibs and the extreme weather jacket and these funky looking moon boots that we had to wear that were supposedly rated to minus 60. Stay puffed out and <laughs> we're ready to go sledding. Phil Spain. Pillsbury man. <laughs> I 
I have a little bit of experience uh, riding snowmobiles. I have no experience riding in the sled. Yeah, that first three hours to camp on the first day. Huh? So that was rough. It was rough, huh? So the sleds they made so you could kind of take the shock when you'd go over jumps or bumps or whatever, and the sled would hit. They'd make they'd try to make it you know more comfortable for you, because no matter what, it's gonna be like oh god. But I had like a 10 inch thick pad on the bottom of me and then on the back of me, so they were all cushioned, so you didn't just hit on the wood of the sled because that would really hurt. Yeah, that's how they get around up here. That's how they move their gear from spot to spot. My guy had to go back and change the shock on the back of his machine. It, uh, it froze. We poured coffee and hot water on it just to get the shock back to normal. Just so we can make it back home without breaking his back. We went back to town solo. Changed her out. Now we're going to rehook up and take off here again shortly. Okay? Back on the road again. <laughs> Another day that we deal with out in this country. The wind is at about uh, 40 to 50. We're in a little bit of a blizzard conditions. So the muskox hunting today is on hold until further notice. Stuck in the cabin all day yesterday because of the wind. It's like 40 to 60 miles an hour. And Visibility was pretty much zero, so hopefully we'll get to go out today. Fingers crossed, the wind's not uh, wind's not blowing too bad like it was yesterday. So excited about it. Hopefully we'll see some muskox today. After talking to Shane and and some of the guides, the cold is a different cold. I mean, you could be back in Nevada, right? And I mean, you and I have hunted mule deer and, and ducks in minus 10 to minus 15 degree weather. Yeah, but that's not... This is know, a different... This is that cold that it bites. Yeah. It, it hurts. And it's dry this time of year. It's a dry, you know, it's a dry climate. But there's something about when the wind blows, and, and the cold, because I think it's cold there all year long, is what they were explaining to us, that, you know, it's just, it's a different kind of cold. It's a bone-chilling cold when that wind Yeah, it goes you. straight to your core. But it's all part of the experience, and we knew that going into it, uh, so that made it, that made it part of the hunt, so, you know, if you want to go kill a musk ox, that's what you're, you know, you're, you get to look forward to, but it's, it's all worth it when you, when you get to see those animals in the environment that they live in. Uh, and, and the terrain, once you get off the ocean ice, is, I mean, it looks like kind of rolling hills and rocks, and it's basically tundra. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's just like, almost like an Arctic desert. <clears throat> just yeah. all barren, you know, hills. I mean, we saw caribou, we saw muskox, we saw a wolf, saw a wolf, saw ptarmigan. We, we shot a few ptarmigan. It was also great that we got to hunt with our friends, uh, Adam and Kevin. We were in the same camp. They would split off in a different direction with their guides every day. To actually see the muskox in the wild, I mean like, you're on the snow, but the wind's blowing, so it's moving the snow around, and you got that gray light as a sky. All of a sudden, there they are. It was pretty awesome to see them alive, and you're actually there. They dig out the snow to get to the grass that they eat, and you can tell because there's tracks everywhere, and the snow's all torn up, and everything's torn up where herds have been. 
So when we pulled up onto it, you know, George just throttled the snowmobile and yelled muskox, and then we came up this ridge and over this hill, and then here there were like, there's probably 20 or 30 of them in that herd. They were all cows wow. and cows, right? Mm -hmm. So we just kept moving on. The native people that uh, we hunted with as our guides there, such amazing people as far as being honest and down to earth and fun to be around, build relationships with. I mean, we made friends with these guys and they made friends with us. It's kind of that bond you have as hunters. I mean, we're friends for life. Joey's guy, George. I mean, he grew up on the, he grew up on the ice. I grew up on the land. My father trusted me when I was 12 years old. You don't see any 12 year olds today being out on their own, but that, that was the time that I became what my father calls a, a man at 12 years old. So I was able to navigate, I was able to harvest, make tools, all, all everything that he did. You know, we learned at a very young age. Now in the winter, when they build an igloo, it'd be negative 70 outside and we wouldn't get above zero net or negative one degree in the igloo itself. I've tried going south a few times in July and I will never do that. But that was a mistake and I won't do that again. But. 30 to 40 degrees of the day is too much. Him and his dad would go on journeys for weeks and months on end to get seals, polar bears. He hadn't seen a muskox until he was 12 years old. And when I've seen it, I thought it was uh, the devil, to be honest. I've never seen one. And it looked huge and black and scary. The navigation, I think, impressed me the most. How they get around. You know, they never had GPSs or anything like that. And even to this day, he says if he has a specific spot, tiny spot that he needs to get back to, he'll mark it on the GPS. But he still uses all the tricks that his dad taught him. Once this lifestyle is done, it's done forever. It's something that you can't just pick up on your own and learn in a couple of days. It takes a lifetime. You know, a lot of this stuff to learn and, and uh, now I'm trying to teach it and share it. Well, we found some muskox. The thing that I was worried about was, you know, making the shot on the right bull because there's 12 of them in a group and they're all kind of bunched together. So you got to wait for the opening and make sure it's the right one. How was that? Good. A lot of patience, a lot of hands freezing, but it's good, it's worth it. Got set up on the RMP. It took a little time because they were they were kind of going in and out of each other. They went to kind of move and he gave Joey a broadside shot and he let the 28 RMP do its job. The second thought that comes to mind, you can't really help it at that moment, is how cold your hands are because you have to take your big mitts off. And I only had a thin glove under your hands start to sting and throb and then to the point where you can't really feel them. I mean, immediately I gave everybody high five, shook all the guys hands and then just put my gloves back on because I was like, we're going to have to cut one of these fingers off. They're too cold. You know, for me, it's all about the kids. You know, I've been hunting a long time. I really want to get a muskox and, you know, hopefully it'll happen for me shortly. But I wanted Joey to shoot first. He made a shot on a great bull. Down he went.
congrats to my son Joey on a beautiful Arctic muskox and hopefully I'm up next. <laughs> It was kind of crazy how how they acted after Joey Joey shot his muskox. You know, half of the half of the group went to the right, and the other half of the bulls went kind of went down this little ravine, and they come up actually towards where we were on the snowmobiles. And luck have it that the uh, second biggest bull in the group was in that group of bulls that split to our left and kind of like flanked us behind the snowmobiles and they actually you know kind of hooked us and came around and stopped it right at about 130 yards you know the guides were like hey Mike that's your that's your bull that's the other big bull so shoot that one just absolutely blessed to be here and to share this with my son and our new friends um, pretty amazing just super stoked <laughs> I keep talking forever I'm like, I'm I'm jacked this is awesome somebody up above it powers would be you know above my pay grade made that one happen because uh, they could have all ran off in the opposite direction and you know we would have had to either look for a different herd or hope we caught up with them later that afternoon, but they went the wrong direction. And Joey and I shot two, two great muskox bulls out of the same herd. Worked out pretty good. After you make a great shot on when you harvest an animal, there's, you know, there's a few things that run through, through my mind. The first being, Thanks to the animal for, for giving his life and providing, you know, food for, you know, and in this case, the guides and, and their village in Cambridge Bay and, and for us that night. And second is, yeah, there, there's that bit of relief of, oh, wow, okay, I got, you know, I got it done. I accomplished what I came here for. And then there's also that part of, Oh man, now it's over. So now I'm done hunting. So, you know, you want to you wanna keep hunting, but you know, it's over. And then, you know, the, the skinning and the caping and the quartering and the, the meat preparation and getting everything back loaded on the sleds and, and getting back to camp, that's all part of the experience. And I, I enjoy every single bit of it. it. Just makes it more of a challenge when it's minus 20 out. You take care of an animal like that, and especially an animal of that size. I mean, they're, they're a big animal. The fact that I got to share it and spend it with my son Joey made it even, even more special. So, and that's what we're all about at Prime Revolution is passing our hunting traditions and outdoor traditions down to our our kids, so they can pass it on to our grandkids, and hopefully that tradition can keep going. And and you know they will pass it on to to their friends and other people that they know. They pulled Joey and I out so they could get some other hunters in and. and we heard that Adam and Kevin got great bulls. You know, that's a feat in itself because they were they were archery hunting. I think hunting, fishing, and camping is a dying art. And it's something that people have been doing since the beginning of time. And it brings families closer together. And that's what we are at Prime Revolution. We're a family. 
just like to throw a thank you out to uh, Shane from Canada North Outfitting, uh, having us up here Cambridge Bay to do the muskox hunt that we've been waiting to do for a year since we booked it. And you know, getting to hunt with you on this trip, as always, when I get to hunt with you, made it even more special and had a great time, even though you know, we suffered through a little cold and some misplaced ribs from riding in the sled. And mm -hmm. Hopefully a chiropractor appointment when we get home. It was, it was all worth it. So and uh, also special thanks to our guides for you know taking care of us while we were out there and helping us and providing us with the needs to get our muskox and get home safely. It was a great trip. Another episode of Prime Revolution in the books, huh? Mm -hmm. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you. you.